Meeting. Scene 42, take one. When Sight and Sound decided to start moving toward film, and we wanted to pick a, a story that was a time period that we could do fairly easily in our own backyard here in Lancaster County, I thought it should be a Christmas story. And that one came to my mind. And I started to research it, and I fell in love with it. This wasn't just a, a simple story to tell. It had a lot of depth. It was supposed to be a short film that was just gonna be like a test run for Sight and Sound. And we ended up making the decision probably about three months into production to write more scenes, shoot more material, make it a feature length, and just go for it. Okay, so Henry says, between the dark and the daylight, go ahead and just rehearse. But the night is beginning to lower. It comes a pause in the day's occupation. Steve Atherholt, he embodied the Henry Longfellow character and spirit. Um, he looked the part. He takes his craft incredibly seriously. Obviously, reading some of his works uh, was, was the start of just reading his poetry and kind of getting a feel for his creative genius. His journals were a uh, very, very good resource for really kind of seeing into his struggles. This film was such a new endeavor for me, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I, what I love about acting is, is finding the truth of the moment, finding authenticity between your partner and yourself and telling the story in a way that is true. Rachel's such a professional. From the first audition, I was like, this is who Fanny should be. It, stepping in and out of the character with her on the spot was really just a pleasure and it was so easy. As you dig into um, him as a person and Fanny as a person, their story, their family, what they went through, um, it just comes alive and you really just fall in love with these people. Charlie Longfellow is a character that I didn't have to dig too deep to try and find. I feel like I could relate to him in a lot of ways. Um, you know, to connect with Charlie, I just remember that period of my own life where you're starting out and you know, you're very sure of yourself and you don't know what you don't know. So you're kind of willing to just charge into anything and my life needs to count. My life needs to mean something. I think Charlie literally charges into some battles and some frays that he has no idea how to cope with and um, that's kind of what his arc is about. It was a surreal experience to, um, to do as much research as we've done on the Longfellow family, and then to see these talented actors wearing the costumes that are period appropriate, and then to put them in the place like the Longfellow study. We found this place in Elizabethtown called Moonstone Manor. It's a bed and breakfast. But when you walk into this Washington room, it's called, the footprint is exactly the same as the Washington Longfellow study. The fireplace is in the same place, the doors on either side of the fireplace, the amount of windows, everything, down to almost the square foot was exactly the same. Um, but we got to experience for the first time being together, being happy, you know, we're joking off camera and we can bring that energy onto camera because we're all having a good time. Shooting the children's hour, the Christmas scene with, uh, was just, it felt like the heartbeat of the story. I just fell in love with those girls and they really were their own little posse. They were just the life of the party, especially for the Christmas scene shoot. The children, I mean, they bring everything. Up notch <laughs> yeah. in terms of energy. We gotta keep up with them. Yeah. <laughs> because they were so tight as a unit, they were able to really make that scene come alive in a truly authentic way. So it was a lot of fun to be with them. Yeah. Just yesterday, Just it was not decorated. Yeah. And now it's all free. The way the set was dressed, it just felt like everybody's like imagination when you picture like cozy, warm Christmas story time, you know, all those like warm, fuzzy holiday feelings, it just felt like it encapsulated that perfectly. And we ended up just moving into that place for collectively three weeks as the Longfellow home.
So for film specifically, it's really important to try to minimize um, the modern world as much as possible, where we don't have a lot of the modern amenities, cables and poles. So it allows us to really come in, dress it in a way that is appropriate. The parade was a ton of fun because we partnered with Landis Valley, which is a place that I love. It's like bringing history to life. Let's see if we're here for the Longfellow family. Huh? You guys ready to rehearse? Yeah. Woohoo! Okay, good, good. All right, so this parade's coming through. It's very exciting. It's a recruitment parade. We've been really fortunate. We've had actually the opportunity to work with some local rain actors and some other living history groups. And we've really been able to make some great relationships with people who do this as a passion. And so bringing history to life is really important to them. There's 150 extras and about 50 or 60 crew today. Uh, total, we're about 230 on set as we stand. Yeah, that's what I missed. It was a great take, but what I missed was a change in your countenance and everything. Hi, Charlie. Hello, Mary. Last night, I was finishing up a built piece, which was a custom design and build for our main character, Mary. So just tweaking the design and making that perfect for the day. We built some pieces for our main characters, our featured actors. We go to local theaters, reenactors, people who do custom sewing, and especially from the reenactment community because there's so much knowledge there. Thank you to those who are living historians, the reenactors themselves. You know, bringing all those puzzle pieces together right here at Landis Valley, and then having to quick put the puzzle together, you know what I mean, before we run out of light, yeah, you know, it kept us stepping, no doubt about it. There were immediately some ideas that came to mind that would help communicate uh, the condition of the protagonist's heart or the journey of the story. And one of those big ideas was a war-torn chapel, which we're sitting in right now, which was built by our very own team on our very own back lot and especially a, a chapel where the bell itself fell to the church floor. Waiting for outside snow. One of the most exciting shoots actually in the film. We're actually laying snow right now and we're bringing New Hope Church to life. So the goal here is gonna be dropping the camera from about 40 feet in the air down through the hole in the church right there. Have that camera go right down to a church bell that's laying on the floor as the first scene of the film. It was a really important shot. It was incredibly technical and complex. And so giving that to this team of problem solvers was an absolute joy. They took it upon themselves to do it. Action! And hover! Beautiful! Nice! That's a good take! Let's do it again! I don't ever want to walk away from a shot without being thrilled. Hey, no, we had it. Let's just keep going. Come on, guys. So we worked for it, and we worked hard, and we were running out of time, and we just kept working at it and working at it and working at it. We finally got it, and it was beautiful. The thing I love about film and coming at it from all these different angles of writing and acting and directing is that it's such a collaborative art form. You know, you, you can't do any, any part of it by yourself in a vacuum. It's so collaborative. So it's so cool seeing just everybody in every department bring their A-game and bring their talents, their gifts to this one singular story. We've teamed up working a lot with some external partners uh, to make this film, it's a collaborative effort. And when that team gets that vision and they start adding their professionalism to it, then you can't stand in those scenes and, and think of just your specific role in it. You see everybody's fingerprints on it. Just walking through this together, the journey of, of learning for me and I think for Josh and the whole team. We had summer camp blues after our shots were over. I mean, we were just, it's like we fell in love with this story and this process and this work. I'm gonna miss the Longfellows, you know? Like, you get to know them so well. You know, you spend so much time with them in the script and then the rehearsals and the casting process. And it's like, you know, a little bittersweet. You're like, no, I don't wanna see the Longfellows go away. I kinda of wanna stay with them, you know? But we're gonna get the film ready for the rest of the world to see it so that they can experience an amazing family and an amazing story. <laughs>